for what will probably be the last time this year, maybe, we're here to tell you about the Chester County Studio Tour. So that was a f***ing lie. So what do you want to start with? How about we did it? We did it. We successfully got through the studio tour. It went really well. Yeah, it was technically my first one in person. You remoted in last time. Yeah, I was streaming because of the pandemic. This year we were both vaccinated, so I was able to be there in person, which was nice. I guess this was a bit closer to the traditional studio tour experience. Last year was kind of an exception in any number of ways, whereas this year things are kind of starting to get back a little bit normal-ish. I took the whole week off of work to prepare for this. And I think as a result of that, I probably did a little bit more procrastinating than I think I normally would have, knowing that I had the whole week to get all this stuff done and found out very early in the week that that was probably not the best <laughs> choice because we ended up pretty much down to the wire on almost everything that we wanted to do. And in fact, we ended up having to abandon one or two of our smaller projects that we didn't get to. Oh, but that gives us more to do for the next one. The second lithophane, which there were supposed to be three of them, but we only ended up doing two. The second lithophane did not get finished until the morning of. And I snapped a couple pictures basically before people started coming through the door. <laughs> so we had a lot of other products that we wanted to display. I had made a bunch of jewelry pieces out of epoxy resin. And then the light switch plates were sort of an extension of that. We needed plates for some light switches that Jeremy installed around the house. So I made some light switch plates for Jeremy. And he was like, you need to make more of these so we can sell them at the studio door. I was like, oh, oh. so I made some more light switch plates in a standard size, 3D printed them and filled them with resin and various decorations. And then we had our stickers, some more prints, and then the lithophanes. So we needed a place to display all of that. I'm a big believer in upcycling. So I'm constantly saving things that most normal people would probably just throw away. I wouldn't throw it away. You actually hold on to literal garbage like... Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Stuff that can't be used. Really? I'm exaggerating a little bit. You're not really exaggerating that much. I actually <laughs> did do that. <laughs> anyway, we keep our garbage very well organized. Oh, um, you do? Okay, I keep my garbage very well organized, so it doesn't look like garbage. It just looks like a stockpile of potentially very useful materials. Among the materials that I've collected were a whole bunch of metal panels that were part of some cubicle furniture that my company got rid of because they replaced all of the office furniture and they took the old stuff and they were going to throw it in the garbage. They asked me if I wanted it. I said, yes, I'll take all of it. I wanted to use the panels to make shelving. I also had this little pop-up Entenmann's display rack that I took home from Wawa like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. The vendor just left it there and they were going to throw it in the garbage and that was another one where I was just like, no, I'm going to take that home. I ended up using one of the panels to basically turn that little stand into like a proper table. And then I came up with the idea of putting lights on it. The lights were also connected to an outlet box on the shelf so that whatever I plugged it into gave me the lights and then three extra outlets, which was important because this was the shelf that was going to be displaying our lithophanes and our lithophanes both needed to plug into something. Thing. We ended up adding two lights on the top, which were parts of an old chandelier. And then underneath the two shelves, I ended up attaching these LED strips that I had saved from when I repaired our TV. Now, the only thing I needed to make them work was a DC power supply, but I save all of my DC power supplies. I had a 20 volt power supply that was left over from an old Lenovo laptop that we don't have anymore. And so I was able to take that laptop supply and wire it into a speaker terminal box that I had left over from the speaker wiring in our old apartment. So we ended up with this really, really nice display shelf that cost us almost nothing to make because almost everything that it was built out of we just had lying around and it breaks down into four pieces and it's really light and as an added benefit having the almost entire structure of this thing being made out of sheet steel means that when we go to display things we can actually use magnets I did a 3D model of Adrian's carriage house, the garage on his property, which is sort of infamous in Downingtown. We had started an email chain with Adrian, and he was talking about different ways to promote the tour. Uh -huh. And he had stumbled on this Facebook page where people were asking questions about his carriage house. And so he thought, oh, well, you know, there's a lot of interest here. Why don't we tack on to this and see if we can gin up some more hype about the haunted house angle and then see if we can get people to come <laughs> out just for the haunted house. And then while they're here, 
why not come look at this artwork or something? So I think that was the initial catalyst for the Witch's House thing. But when we came and did the interview with Adrian, while we were there, you took some pictures of it and leaning into the idea of promoting the tour around visiting the carriage house, you actually modeled it and printed models. I just thought it was such an interesting building. Like I can see why people would start rumors about it because it had some very unusual features. The windows looked like they were upside down and there was a big pentagram in the upper windows. So I set off on this obsession like the guy in Close Encounters of the Third Kind who just sees that mountain in his head and he keeps trying to like build it out of his mashed potatoes and whatever. I kind of became that guy with the haunted carriage house and I just had to like build it out of something. So I I had (laughs) taken all these pictures so I used them as a reference just sort of eyeballed it and made a model in Blender. And I printed a few of those to sell as souvenirs. We actually brought Gertrude to the studio tour and had her printing a model. Setting up the 3D printer actually ended up being a really cool way of getting people's attention. Most of the people that came into the room where we were set up at Adrian's place, that drew their eye almost immediately. Yeah, almost Um, everyone had questions about the 3D printer. Is that a 3D printer? What is that? What is it doing? What are you making? How does it work? Is it magic? Is it witchcraft? I I got to info dump about 3D printing, which was, I always want to info dump about 3D printing. Sorry, I'm just so excited! Oh, I know you enjoyed that. And while we're talking about our setup, I feel like we couldn't have gotten luckier in terms of well first of all getting paired with adrian and gwen who we absolutely adore and we got to talk to them both this year and learn so much more about them and their artwork but then on top of that adrian's house is just kind of a work of art all by itself which is Uh, what some of the guests actually said he also i think in my opinion ended up giving us the best room in the house we had these three very large very gorgeous stained glass windows right behind this massive table that he gave us to display our stuff on right across from the fireplace which ended up being the perfect place to set up that stand we built. In addition to bringing Gertrude we also brought our laptop with a TV screen. That was the second thing that drew people's eyes when they came in the room was the TV screen and on that TV screen for the vast majority of the show we actually had a montage video of a couple of our time lapse. It ended up being a really useful tool because last year when we were there it was a lower turnout we were outside there was a whole bunch of other problems but it was, uh, a it was hard to explain explain or describe to people what that process actually looked like and being able to put the time lapse up on the screen made it really easy to be like this is what it looks like and it completely demystifies the whole thing there was one lady that came in and it just clicked oh it's just art (laughs) digital art is not a different thing it's just a different medium like it's still art like aha you're just drawing it's great to be able to bring that to people and like you said demystify some of these things like digital art or 3d printing or any kind of new emerging technology that we use to create things. I love sharing that with people, maybe getting them interested in knowing more about it because then I'll have more people to talk about 3D printing with. Please what? talk to you about 3D printing. <laughs> <laughs> this year was a much better experience than last year for all the reasons that you would expect. We had a little bit more experience. The show itself was a lot less restricted. The weather was nicer. For so many reasons, it was just a much better experience this year. We're really excited to do it again next year. And definitely excited to keep working with Gwen and Adrian and everybody too. And of course, huge gigantic thanks to Adrian and his entire family who were absolutely wonderful. Just the best hosts and super generous. My favorite part about the whole tour was Saturday night, the end of the first day after everybody else had left, Adrian, Gwen, Adrian's family, Aaron and I just hung out for like two hours. We were there from six to eight, just hanging out and having a good time and talking about all sorts of things. And that was, I think, the thing that was missing from last year because last year, at the end of the day, we had to break everything down before we left. And by the time we were done with that, we were like so exhausted that we just kind of went home. But this year we were able to hang around and getting to have all those great conversations that we had. That's something that I'm really, really grateful for. And I'm glad that got to be a part of the experience this year talking to people has been really inspiring so I certainly feel motivated to keep working on stuff. I'd like to keep up that momentum because I have a lot of ideas for stuff that I want to do next and I'm sure Jeremy does too so don't touch that dial. 